Hi everyone, in this video I want to go over a book on writing proofs. The book is called An Introduction to Abstract Mathematics and it was written by Bond and Keen. So most math majors have to take a course on proof writing and this is the kind of book that they use in a course like that. This is a pretty good book. Let's take a look inside it. Let's take a brief look at the table of contents. So it starts with mathematical reasoning, then it goes on to sets, and then functions, and then binary operations and relations. A very, very, you know, reasonable order. It then goes on to discuss the integers, infinite sets, some stuff with real and complex numbers, and it actually talks about polynomials, which is kind of interesting. That's kind of a, uh, a not a very common topic in a proof writing book. And then it has answers and hints to selected exercises, which is super useful. You know, when you're learning to write proofs, having answers or at least partial answers is a huge, huge help. This is the section on compound statements. And, you know, you can read this stuff without too much math background. Anyone can actually jump in for the most part and, you know, understand a lot of the content in this book. You know, it's a math book, so you will get stuck and you will run into difficulty. But, you know, the fact it starts with mathematical reasoning um, means that most people should be able to jump in and understand, you know, most of it. This is kind of cool. It says, the preceding truth table shows that the statement forms not P and Q and not P or not Q are logically equivalent. Yeah, so stuff like that is really, really useful for writing proof. That's something that, you know, you need to know in order to be a successful proof writer. You know, being able to negate things and understanding quantifiers is critical in, you know, mathematical reasoning and proof writing. This is from the section on contrapositive and converse. Example four says, prove that if n is an integer and n squared is even, then n is even. And this is nice because they go through it and the authors show you how they get stuck. So then they prove it using the contrapositive. So it's a really nice example of, you know, things that actually happen when you're trying to prove things on your own. Um, you run into difficulties and the authors kind of do it on purpose just to show you how to, you know, work around those difficulties. This book has a lot of knowledge. So this is the chapter on sets and 2.1 is on sets and subsets. So it starts off with an introduction, and then let's see how many examples are in this section. So one, two, you turn the page, three, four, five, it keeps going, six, seven, eight, nine, does it keep going? Let's see, it does keep going, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, it's gotta be it, right? Let me turn the page, it's ridiculous. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We're still in the same section. This is still 2.1. I can't believe it. Like, how big is this section? 21. Okay, so 21 uh, examples. Over here you see the exercises. So that's the end of the section. That is a lot, a lot of knowledge. And notice the layout. It's like example, example, example. I think it's a good way to, you know, break things up in a book. It makes it really, really simple. And it makes it easy for you to set goals. Like if you want to get to the first 10 examples today, that's a good goal. And then get through the next 10 the next day, that's a good goal. One of the biggest pros of this book, in fact, it's probably the biggest, is the number of exercises. So this is the section on uh, definition and basic properties. And it's on chapter three, which is functions. Look at all of these exercises here. So you have, you know, really basic exercises. And then you know, the difficulty level does rise. Let's turn the page so we can see. There's even more exercises. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's a lot of problems. Notice some of them are like multiple parts. Let's go over here so you can see more. I mean, just tons of problems, which is good. You know, a lot of books on proof writing, they don't have tons of exercises. And this gives you that. And just so you see, it does keep going. So 24 exercises in just this one section. That's pretty amazing. Here you see some of the exercises in 3.2, which are on surjective and injective functions. So if you're wondering why is it important to have so many exercises? Well, we learn math by reading and by doing problems and also watching videos, of course. But when you do math problems, you learn a lot of math. Um, there's that old saying, they say math is not a spectator sport. 
it's true, right? I mean, you can get a lot from reading and watching videos, but it's when you do the problems that you get the most out of it. Problem solving is really where it's at. And this book gives you tons of problems. The only challenge is you actually have to solve them. And another thing, you know, if you're taking a course uh, on proof writing or on anything where you cover like surjective and injective functions and you're preparing for a test, you know, after you do your homework, it's a good idea to find additional resources. And this is that kind of resource, right? This gives you extra problems you can practice in order to prepare for exams. So earlier we had looked at 3.1 and there were 24 exercises. So how many answers do we have? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 answers from the 24 questions. And I don't even know if they're full answers. Look at this one. 3 is just A, D, and G. Well, where are the other parts, right? They're missing. So roughly 10 out of 24, not quite. In a perfect world, we would have a book that would have full solutions to every single problem. Unfortunately, that's really hard to find, especially in proof writing books. I was gonna go to the next section, but look at this, the examples continue. We're still in binary operations. I mean, this is ridiculous. You become a master <laughs> at binary operations with this book. This is such a good book, you know, you, you learn so much. Just, you know, working through, you know, 10 examples a day is better than no examples. And that's pretty small, you know, it doesn't take that long you know, to work through, you know, 10 examples in a book like this. You can probably do it, uh, depending on the examples, in an hour or even less. It just depends, right? It depends on the difficulty, it depends if you get stuck. Look at that, 38 examples, is that it? Let me turn the page, yep, that's it. This is nice, let's turn back here so you see something. It says mathematical perspective groups. So it talks here a little bit about groups. That's right, because at the beginning of group theory, you learn what a group is. And a group is a set with the binary operation that satisfies, you know, certain, you know, properties. And this kind of gives you, you know, a heads up into that. This is a really important and useful section too. It's the one on equivalence relations. So equivalence relations come up over and over and over again in mathematics. They're one of those ideas that is just everywhere in math. So it's one of those things that you use multiple times. So by the time you're done with your math degree, if you study math, you become really, really good at equivalence relations. And this book, you know, this book treats it and it covers it because it's so important. So it's kind of like an overview of, you know, the most important stuff that the authors think that math majors should know. And the most important things that math majors should know in order to help them, you know, become better at writing. The book is a pretty good size. It's not big, it's a smaller book. You know, most of these proof writing books, and I have a bunch of these, um, most of them are about the same size. You know, they're not huge, thick books. What, what varies in them is the topics that they cover and how the proofs are presented and the exercises, but uh, pretty good size, uh, average, I would say, for a proof writing book. This is the section on binary operations and relations. This stuff is super important. So if you ever take abstract algebra, you typically start by you know briefly studying binary operations. Well, here it's more than a brief study, right? You get tons of exposure, tons of examples, tons of problems. I think you have a deeper treatment of binary operations in this book than you would in pretty much you know most abstract algebra books. I mean, look at all of these examples really really nice just a great treatment this is the section on the division algorithm and this is the one for polynomials you know recently someone left a comment that as an assignment they were asked to prove the division algorithm for numbers and they weren't able to do it and they were having doubts you know i think it's a big ask if you can't prove the division algorithm without ever seeing the proof I think it's okay, right? I think it's okay to get stuck. And you know, that's part of math. You're gonna get stuck. So as you read through this book, you know, if you get stuck and you will, just remember it's okay, right? That's why they make books like this. That's why books like this exist. You know, the reason that there is a course in college that uses a book like this, again, the book is the one by Bond and Keen, is because writing proofs is hard. You know, one of the things you get as a math major when you're done with your four year degree is you know how to write proofs. Ideally, you are pretty good at writing proofs. You're not like a master, but you're pretty good. And it takes four years to get there. So just remember that when you're reading through this book or any book on proof writing or you're working on math, math is tough for everyone, right? It takes a long time 
to get really good at this stuff. I hope this video has been helpful in some way. Good luck and take care.